All right, this is a quick tutorial on the new uh, ubergump edit um, ubergump edit command. So basically, all you got to do is type ubergump edit, and then you give it the name of a of the gump file you want to create. Um, if you just type ubergump edit, it explains the different ways you can call the command. Um, did I say edit gump? It looks like I have a typo in there. But anyway, it's ubergump edit is the right command. And it will create a, a file named gump underscore and then whatever you type in here and then it append, appends XML, .xml to it. So I'm going to create a gump called um, CTF control. So that actually, when I do that, it will create a file. Uh, it creates this gump right here. It's just a default uh, gump object that has uh, a label in it. And uh, a box and that's it so um, we can actually start playing around with this and changing it on the fly and it actually is cr uh, editing the gump file as we do it but the gump itself is actually named um, gump underscore um, what did I call it I called it a uh, let's see ctf control dot xml so the gump actually if you, and if you look in my overscript folder, folder which is super messy right now um, you should see it right there. So it created this file. That file actually looks like this right now. So this is uh, the Uberscript Gump format. And when we actually use this Gump in game, let me uh, give you an example. Um, let me add. <coughs> how about I add another label to this V box? So this this tree elements box basically is a a uh, a browser. Oh, it has a kind of a silly functionality, and then if you click the gump, it it disappears. But, but um, um, that kind of browses through the elements of the gump, so you can highlight the gump, or highlight the element in here, and it populates this area right here. So I highlighted the V box. That's a vertically aligned box. So every element inside that's a child of this ver vertically aligned box basically will be sequentially um, uh, added. So if I add a bunch of buttons, for example this VBox, you can see I added a bunch of uh, buttons, you know, in a vertical fashion. Um, it, it automatically calculates the size of the gump art um, and figures out how much space to allot it. Uh, if you look at now my updated, uh, I, my gump CTF control has changed. It now looks like this. Um, so you could manually, of course, do this, but you know, who, who wants to do that when you can do it this way? <coughs> um, so now I can, you know, select the, this button and delete it, and delete it, and delete it. Um, oh, you can navigate through these arrows as well. You can see how up and down is it moves across siblings. If you, if there is no arrow there, then it means you you know I can't navigate up because there is no sibling above it. Um, you can do um, move it up or. Oh, uh, if it has a child node, so it's written in XML, um, there's a text node on this one. You can't actually change anything about that. You change it through this text element here. But uh, anyway, if there is a, a node, a child node on it in the XML, then you can navigate uh, this way. If there's a parent, you can navigate this way. Right now I'm at the top level Gump object, which has these attributes. Uh, if I make it not closable, Currently it's closable. I closed it, so I'm going to hit Update Element, and now it's not closable. I'm I'm right clicking right now, and I can't close it. Um, but we want it to be closable, so I just change it and hit Update Element. And now it's closable. Um, let's see, draggable. You know, by default they're draggable. Um, if you update it, now I can't drag it. Okay, stuff like that. Uh, that's what the, the elements, the resizable and disposable, I don't actually know what those mean. I think disposable, just leave true. Resizable, I just leave true. It doesn't really do anything. Um, I'm not sure if it's something that's not implemented on the client side or what, but anyway. Um, so I'm going to add a, another. Oh. Uh, like I said, if you click the gump, it disappears for some reason. I have to fix that, but I'm going to add another. Uh, um, or I'll just give you an example of each element. An H box. Uh, so the Gump element itself doesn't have any specific uh, doesn't have any specific formatting. So if I add something and it's a child, a direct child of the Gump, right, uh, like this H box is, 
um, then you basically uh, have to specify the x and y. Right now the x and y is 0, so and because this h box is, comes after this v box, you can see this h box is on top of it. It has some padding, um, it has this background ID. If you want to see what different background, this, this background here is 3500, you can hit background help. Pops this up. This uh, comes from a Gump tutorial that was made. It's on the Run Your Forms. It's really kind of a nice Gump tutorial, but uh, but you don't need to know any of it because we have this thing now, which is really nice. Um, and I picked 3500, so that's this background. So those are handy for backgrounds for V box, uh, H box, and box. Um, so I'd have to specify a specific X and Y if I wanted to add something specifically to um, to this uh, to the Gump element. Uh, the box works the same way. If I had a box, see, I just added a box to this H box, and it kind of filled it in for us uh, with some default values of 20 padding, uh, this background ID, uh, things that are inside of of a box. I added a label to the box. I have to set the text to something. Hello. I'm gonna update the element. Um, if I had another label, oh, uh, move gump element. I'll have to come back to. If I add another label to the box, here I'm on the box again, and I come in here, you see it just puts it right on top. So the box, if you use box, it, it is a, uh, you have to specify the X and Y um, for each element <coughs> specifically. Otherwise, um, yeah, it'll just be all, all on top of each other. So it's kind of like a canvas, you know, you have control, very direct control of where the item is located but it doesn't do any formatting for you, which uh, can be a bad thing, can be a good thing. We're going to delete that element, so now it's just the hbox. Again, you can see it's going to reload my file. The file is populated as you edit it. Um, so I am going to actually, I usually start with a vbox as my base element, um, so I'm going to delete this uh, hbox, but oh, for if you wanted to move an element, for example, I'm going to move the H box to be before the V box. You can see how it ends up behind it. Um, if I wanted to um, make it a child of the V box, basically the the sibling siblings are on the same level. So the V box and H box are siblings. And these the four elements are siblings, uh, and they're also children of this V box. Um, if you want to <coughs> add a child. Or if I wanted to take this H box and move it into make it a child of the V box, I can use this move gump element. Um, you can see how it, it kind of just moves it uh, to to become a child of the, the sibling before it. Um, so that's how that works. So now it's a child of the V box, and the V box tries to fit it into you know it has fit to contents. So this fit to contents attribute is true. Um, if that's false, then it then it doesn't. You know, it specifies the width and height. It, it, if it fit to contents is true, it ignores whatever's in width and height. Otherwise, it it'll be as big, as wide, and as tall as you specify in those elements. So, um, <coughs> yeah. So I think we're ready. Um, we're gonna make a quick gump here. Um, oh, let me show you all the elements real quick. I'm gonna do it inside this V box. Um, I'm going to add a button. You already saw a checkbox, um, a radio button. These are all, say, it, it kind of populates it with some default values, um, but these values you can actually change um, to whatever you want. I don't know what, what that is, but let's find out. That's the active button. <laughs> so you can change it to whatever you want. Um, a checkbox. You see, there's no label next to the checkbox element, and there's no the name isn't isn't a label. Uh, what you'd have to do in order to really make something nice in that regard is uh, is add an H box, for example. So I'm going to add an H box, and inside the H box, I'm going to add a check box and a label, and the label is going to be uh, check this, and there you go. Um, if you want the H-box, for example, uh, to not have any padding, you can set it to zero. Uh, you can set the background ID to zero as well if you don't want it to be out of the background. So now we got a, a uh, an H-box. Um, I should probably add a copy element. That would be handy. You know, I'll have to add that so that you can just copy 
if you wanted to add a bunch of H boxes like this, just copy, 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 and then it, it would pop it in. That's a good idea. Anyway, um, so here is uh, here's my Gump. I'm going to uh, go ahead and delete this B box and make a new one. I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna <coughs> come in here. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a uh, a Gump that lets you basically edit all the important attributes on the uh, on the CTF game controller guy. Um, so here is uh, the CTF control window. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make it kind of a nicer hue color. You can play around. I don't know what, what the best hue is. Let's try. That's pretty. Oh, no, that's too light. Uh, no, that's too ugly. Oh, 1153 is kind of nice. It's CTF control window. Okay, I want to add. Um, we'll do an H box. Um, we need to be able to set the date, the day. Um, so let's do a button. Oops. Uh, we'll move that to the child, be a child of the H box. Um, oops. We will add a label. Or a yes, a label and a text entry. Um, the label we're gonna have day of week. Well, actually, why don't we make a button? Yeah, how about this? This is I think I don't know. I mean, it, this is all your design. You know, you can decide what you want to do. I'm gonna add a label before this H box. We'll move you up before the H box, and we're gonna name you um, day of week. Okay. We're going to do. Um, some buttons and labels. So this H box, I don't want to do a text entry. I'd rather not have have to force you to type something. Um, in, in order to say I want it to be Friday, why don't we just make a button for each day of the week? You know, make it easier. <coughs> so I'm going to delete the text entry, the label. I'm going to call Monday. All right. Uh, looks like we could possibly use a little bit of space between the two. So I'm going to come in here. Horizontal gap is a property of an H box. I'm going to set it to five, and that looks a little nicer. Um, so now we're ready to go. So here would be a nice time to be able to add. Um, oh, you know what? You know what I should do? I'm going to add a V box to that, and inside of the V box. I'm gonna do a bunch of H boxes. Okay, so I'm gonna add this or put this down below the H bo V box and then add it to the V box. I'm gonna take away the background, take away the padding. Oh, you see, if you ever enter an invalid value, you'll get a big string of of text that tells you what happened. Box get padding did not result in integer. Um, you don't really need to know anything about it, and that'll disappear after a while. I need to actually specify it's a zero. So you really, there's, it's hard to break it, and if you do break it, uh, let me know so I can fix it. Uh, oops. Padding, I want zero padding, I want no background. So now I'm, I have a V box with an a H box in, in it. That's kind of how you uh, add forms, form items, is you add an H box and then something with a label next to it. So I'm going to keep adding H boxes. Um, we're gonna need seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we're gonna need to manually go on. This is where a copy thing would be very useful, but I don't don't have it unfortunately. So, um, so we're gonna have to do this manually. Actually, this is where I could do it over here. Why don't I copy and paste it in this? Okay, and then copy and paste it three, four, five, six, seven times. In fact, I could I could just change it in here. No, 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 Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, 
I'm gonna reopen the CTA control and bam we got it uh, we could even if you want to separate them a little bit why don't we add a vertical gap on this H and V box that controls all these we're gonna add a vertical gap of three that looks a little bit nicer won't accidentally click the wrong one maybe uh, five how's that alright so now we need to be able to set the time of day um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a, another uh, I don't need a V box this time I'll do a H box and then we'll do a label and a text entry and the label will say <coughs> label will say uh, hour to start EST Oops, it doesn't like it because Uber it actually tries to parse that string with UberScript, and the colon is something that it will have trouble parsing on. So you have to put it in quotation marks. That's something kind of a gotcha you got to be aware of. You can actually do math in here. So if I did string one and then did one plus one, it should be two, right? You can do uh, trig mob dot name and whoever the gump is sent to puts their name in there so this actually has full access to uberscript and that's got to be another whole tutorial um, so I will uh, I'll get into that another time uh, but anyway so the text here was what again uh, hour to begin est oh Let's see Gotta put it in quotes. Hour to begin, otherwise it evaluates it. Like I said. Okay. Now my text entry object is in here. Is right here. I'm going to want. Uh, well, let's make the size instead of 230, which is 230 characters. Let's make the size two, so you can only put two two words and two letters in there right um, and then I think we're good to go except we can make the height a little smaller uh, I have the height a little bit larger so that if you go on to the next level it will have some room but we can do probably half of that height okay <coughs> so that's good to go um, oh we probably ought to add a button indicating a <coughs> the the time to begin or you know that you want to update the time to begin so we will add that button I'm going to select the button I'm going to move it oh not there up oh, there we go and this H box ought to have a horizontal gap of uh, five um, one thing you can see this uh, text entry is a little bit over here that's because I don't go through the calculation of exactly how wide each letter is that's I think you know it'd be nice to do but that I think it takes more resources than it's worth um, but we can I believe let me test it if we want to offset the X a little bit let's do that where is it okay it's there so let's do negative 30 so now it's a little bit closer to the end right There we go. <coughs> um, and in fact, we maybe ought to do a little, little like you know, little box there. Um, and you see how it's offset like this? Uh, that's because I pulled it over with the X. If I if I change that back to zero, it'll fix that. But so. The fitting is a little strange. I might need to tweak it a little bit. I'm not sure that's working exactly as intended right now. But in any case, uh, this box that I want to add, um, I want to put the uh, the text entry into the box. So I'm going to move it underneath it as a sibling, and then to the right. Now the text entry is inside the box. I'm going to take away the padding. I'm going to take away the back. Or I'm going to how about this background 930 9300. Zero, zero. I'm going to set that. <coughs> um, and now, oh, did that go through? No, it didn't. 
9300 update element there we go padding I want let's do zero I'm gonna do the width and the height as uh, fit to contents um, text entry currently it's not quite uh, let's see if it is zero what would it be there we go okay so now let's move the the X of the box instead of the text entry uh, that looks pretty nice all right it's not too shabby let's add a uh, small I think we can either add a little bit of padding but that that kind of increases the size in that direction and that doesn't look too nice so let's get rid of that or else we can do um, a little bit of X here oops I need that and then we'll make that three there we go and we can change the width down a little bit let's change this to 20 width 24 how's that looks pretty darn pretty darn good okay um what we'll want to do now is uh, because I don't want to copy all that again I can come in here and find that H box right this H box and I can copy and paste this stuff right and we'll do this as minute to begin and that should be 0 through 60 and I'm going to save it, I'm going to close this, close, 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 and I'm going to rerun the command now, re reloaded. Uh, it looks like minute to begin is a little bit different, uh, so I'm going to select this box. Uh, a little bit different width than this one, so minus 40 isn't quite right. Do minus 35, and it should be ready to go. So now the question is, how do we connect this to UberScript? Um, and the way you do that is um, I've created actually a corpse wheel that's this thing right here Whee! Um, I put it in gump demo or something like that there it is so it's completely empty right now but we want to respond um, to to this gump so basically um, what we want is an on gump response right now there has to be a way to get this gump so we're gonna do an on use function and then we'll check uh, there's a way to check your access level um, so a trig mob is the trigger mob that, that triggered the use trig mob dot access level equals and then let's actually change that to a string right because uh, it's it's currently an enum and if it equals owner or it equals developer or it equals administrator so those three groups of people uh, if they meet that qualification it sends a gump to them um, it sends it to the trig mob that's a to send gump to mobile and the gump file name is uh, what gump? I'm going to put in quotes gump. Um, what did I call it? CTF control dot XML. Right? Um, and when it's, there's a gump response, so this is where we actually are missing one important thing. And that is we want to um, <coughs> basically add, um, add names to all these buttons. Names are used by Uberscript to specify which button was pressed. Okay, so what you'll need to do is uh, name each button something that that uh, that you want to um, use. You know, it's, it's basically a variable. So, so two things happen, right? Um, if I named a button um, Goober, uh, so when I press this button, which is the first one. It sends to Uber. It starts this. Uh, where to go? I could do two tests. There's two places that it stores the state inside of this uh, gump on gump response trigger. 
first one I'm going to use is strings dot button pressed, and that get, that will have if if it's not null. Um, if it is null, then no button was pressed. So I'm going to check that first because I don't want to try checking something that uh, doesn't exist. And then we'll check if string dot button pressed equals uh, Monday or Goober, right? Say trade mom goober was pressed. Okay, so I'm gonna do an uber reset here. Um, so I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add a plate. This is my magic button that I'm gonna press. I'm gonna add script. Gump demo dot us. So I double click it and pop. There is the thing. I click it. Goober was pressed. You see how that works? Pretty straightforward, right? Um, nothing happens when I press Tuesday or Wednesday. So basically, I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll just simply um, do it where I'm going to check for that it's one of the days of the week. And I'm going to I'm going to do this in here rather than do it in the Gump element. So it's sometimes easier, like I said, if you want copy and pasting and stuff to do it in the XML itself. Um, so um, one thing, let's see. So I'm going to copy this into the name. Copy name, copy name, copy name, copy name, copy name, copy name. OK, um, the hour to begin button will have a name as well. Let's call it hour to begin. It's the name of that button and the name of this button is minute to begin. I'm going to save. I'm going to close everything. I'm going to redo. And now basically all I need to do is uh, oh I'm sorry, text entry has a name as well. So this variable, as I recall, will be stored in the strings dot whatever the name is. So um, we'll call this one minute text input or text entry. And then we'll do copy that and put it into here as well. And this will be our text entry. So we just need to basically check which button was pressed. Um, so we're just going to copy this bunch of times, right? We're going to need nine buttons. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, Saturday, Sunday, and the other things I call this minute to begin button. And there is an hour to begin button. Okay. So now, <coughs> um, rather than say Goober was pressed, I'm going to find and replace all that with nothing. Um, we're going to, uh, here, how about actually, instead of replacing it with nothing, I'm going to replace it with uh, XML, XML strings um, dot date to begin equals strings dot button pressed because it's just using that same name why not so the date to begin string it's a string that will now be stored it currently doesn't exist on me I don't have a XML XML strings are actually stored if you do the get at get at attachments function and target yourself it would show a XML local variable object on me named date to begin. Currently, I don't have one, of course. Um, and it wouldn't be on me, actually. It would be on this thing. This thing has this XML script I attached to it, the gump demo.us. That's all the XML attachments on it. Um, so now I think it's ready to go. Uh, except we don't want this. We want XML, XML ints. Dot Dot, uh, let's see, 
hour to begin should be hour to begin equals and then I think let me see uh, from st our string uh, string to number we got it gives it it returns a double we don't want a double we want an integer okay so we'll convert the double to an integer and store it in the hour to begin <coughs> a variable um, which again doesn't exist on this item yet um, but it will after this is run because xml ints if you don't have anything before it if I did trig mom dot this then it would add that to the triggering mom but we don't want that if I do this dot xml ints then it's the same as doing it like this without this dot xml ints so it's going to add that xml attribute to the this item that has a script attached to it which is the plate so string number I'm going to do um, let's see if the button is pressed hours to begin I want to get the string out of the hour text entry so I'm going to do strings dot hour text entry this will have the value after you click the button of whatever is in this text box um, so it's going to try to set that it'll actually throw an exception that uber script catches and everything it'll have an error if if uh, somehow this was empty or was wasn't a number or something I believe we'll see what happens uh, so a minute to begin we want to get from the minute text entry okay then do an uber reset double click it um, I'm going to select Sunday I'm going to get attribute on it looks like it now has an XML local variable that stores this string Sunday in it um, I don't remember what it's called on the CTF controller uh, mob on the actual server but um, and then do, 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 do. hour to begin let's give that one a try um, we're gonna do 20 so that that'd be 8 o'clock at night now I can get attribute or get attachment on it and yes indeed it has the XML value on it 20 right let's try AA and now I don't see an exception it just let's see what it put in here zero so if it failed to parse it it just puts it to zero looks like um, which I guess is acceptable let's say we wanted to start at 5:30 p.m. We'll do 17:30. Oh well, I can only change one at a time. Now there's like minutes to begin. It's 30, and then 17. Okay, good. Um, in fact, why don't we, why don't we do it this way? Uber Gump edit. Uh, it was called CTF control. Rather than do two H boxes. Why don't we put it all in one, um, one VBox? So I'm going to add a VBox. Um, oh, see, that's at the Gump level. I don't want the Gump level. I want it to be a child of this VBox. And there it is. Um, I'm going to um, remove this uh, the H box. I want this to be a child of the V box. So I'm going to move it down, down. And then as a child, down, down, child. And then I'm going to uh, go ahead and remove the buttons from the V box, from, from the H boxes. I'll delete that. I'll delete that. Um, I'll remove the padding from these H boxes. And as well as the background from them. We don't need a background. <laughs> Excuse me. Now we're gonna add a button to this. Um, <coughs> and basically, uh, why don't I go ahead and move that button over? And let's make the V box a vertical gap of four. 
And why don't I go ahead and do uh, a little bit with this. I'm not sure what will happen actually if I do that. No, nope. doesn't look too good, huh? I need to fix that. I think I have it, have it a little bit off. Um, oops, let's do zero. Uh, minus 10. Minus 8. There. That looks better, doesn't it? And then uh, that OK button right here. I'm going to name it update our date and no, no, hour and minute. Okay, so now I'm going to come in here, it's been updated, I'm going to check if hour and minute button has been pressed, and then I will check whether this doesn't equal an empty string. I think I can do that. I don't know what will happen if, uh, if I do it this way. And if this is an equal an empty string as well, I want to do this. I'm not sure. I'm not. I don't remember if empty strings actually give Uber script a little bit of trouble. It might actually. Uh, it didn't didn't pop up an error, so um, so let's try this. We're gonna set this. It's currently 17 and 30. We'll reset. Okay. Let's do one. Oh, there's an error. Um, yes. So it doesn't like that empty string. I'll have to I'll have to create a function or something to create an empty string because that's actually something that's useful sometimes. Um, well, uh, how do we want to make sure that, um, cause we want to give you the power to make it a zero. Uh, you know what? Since I don't have the power to check an empty string right now, let's just do it the way I did it before. Uh, or... Nah, uh, let's just do it. Let's just expect that you actually put something in there. In both of them. So it's up to you whether you want to screw it up or not. <laughs> and what I mean is, <coughs> you got to put both in there. And now it should update. Five and three, that's good. If you don't put both in there, or if then it will assume a zero probably so that it's five and zero now zero five yep so yeah i'm not checking the input whether for a valid input really but anyway we kind of see how it works um and so basically we add this script now to to the uh the ctf controller character and we should be able to set this stuff oh the other thing we ought to do is uh is turn on or add another button and we'll call it turn uh, or let's see enable and we will let's see how do we want to do this enable yeah do it like this So if it's enabled or turn, let's let's call it turn off. I don't know. It's late. I can't really think straight. And uh, let's have another button called turn on. Actually, why don't we do it as a text box? Huh? Let's do a text box. And that will be outside the V box. So it's inside this V box, the main the main V box, and the check box. And um, well, I should actually add it into an H box. 
I put this checkbox into the as a child of this H box, and then add a label to it. Mm -hmm. I set this to running and update the element. Uh, well, let's call it enable. Enable sounds better. I'm going to add a little bit of a horizontal gap here. And this checkbox now, this is going to be interesting. So the question is if it's, if it's active or not. Um, ooh, we can't, oh, you know, that's a, that's kind of an issue actually. Maybe I shouldn't implement these as a checkbox because we can actually control um, let's see, enabled checkbox. I'm going to name it. We can actually control whether it's checked or not programmatically um, by default. So I'm going to actually come in here rather than have default false. I'm going to change this to. Huh. Wonder if if the Gump editor actually will have a problem with this, but I'm going to do this dot or script dot timer I'm going to cast it as a string this probably won't make much sense but I think it's so if I do a get attribute on this thing right and I check the script inside the script there's a timer subscriptions and I want to check that timer subscriptions because the timer subscriptions is an enum I have to cast it as a string to do a comparison if this uh, you can't have spaces in these things, um, the timer subscription. Uh, da, 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 equals one minute, I believe. If I needed to use quotes in here, I would have to do that. to escape it because you can't use quotes inside of the quotes in XML. Well, let's see what happens now. I don't know what will happen with uh, running this. So currently it's not enabled. If I check this. Uh, defaults off. Now let's try to execute it actually with, uh, with a subscription on it. In order to do that, we need to actually have a on one minute, which our CTF controller guy, which is what we're going to attach this script to in the end, actually has this on one minute trigger on him. If you don't have a trigger on one minute, then you can't have a subscription for one minute. I'm not going to do anything in there for this test purposes. Um, so now it's subscribed to the one minute timer. You see, if I try to subscribe it to 10 milliseconds, it says none because it doesn't doesn't have a on 10 milliseconds um, trigger. You can only subscribe to something you have a trigger for. Otherwise, it's just wasting processor. Okay, so um, so now now it's actually subscribed to one minute. So I'm going to do over reset, and you see it's checked because it has a subscription, right? Um, if you want to um, <coughs> unsubscribe it now, in this response. I believe it stores the minute uh, right here. Um, so enabled checkbox. It stores uh, it in the ints in ints variables and enabled checkbox. If ints dot enabled checkbox is equal to one, uh, basically sets this when this is checked and you hit OK somewhere, hit a button, it basically will, will run this here. Uh, or it will it will have a one in there because that's the name of the checkbox, right? In the ints in the ints dictionary, the variable. So if they have that checked, otherwise script Let's see. 
we want to subscribe the script so because there there's another script that manages all the CTF stuff so we need to get that script um, so we have to use the get attachment function on and I don't think you can see this but so we give it on the item so that's the this um, you can't see this but the next one is the attachment type and it's an XML script is the attachment type and the last one is the attachment name and I think I call it CTF main um, and I need to store that in an object variable so I'm going to store this as the script and I'm going to do object.script dot uh, timer subscriptions equals none or equals one minute otherwise equals none okay I'm going to add script um, just for fun that doesn't really well I think it's I think it's all in here let's uh, fun slash ctf slash world slash ctf dot us it's not a file there what is it called world ctf dot txt that's right that's before I create an uber script extension so now I'm Dress like the event guy, you know, event master is my name. Um, and if I add this script to my myself, you see, I'm going to do git at on myself, and I have this CTF main script. Um, what I need to do now, um, every minute, every minute I say the date and the time. Um, and because I'm currently this CTF main script is currently subscribed to one minute once I the day of the week matches this data and this hour to begin a minute to begin um, let me make sure I did that shell strings date to begin should be day of week so I'm going to rename this day of week la la la. hour to begin that matches this variable. Minute to begin matches this variable. And we are almost good to go. Is that the name of the, the, the script? Yes, it is. I think that this will actually do our business. So do what we want. So I'm going to add a attachment XML. Oh, I'm sorry, add script demo.us on myself double click myself and or I use something it doesn't matter if the on use the on use function is on you or on, on a mobile and you're controlling that mobile then anytime you use anything it actually runs that on use function that's how it works if it's on a mobile um, and you are controlling the mobile so anyway currently um, enable is false because when I in the gump here I'm checking whether the script dot timer subscriptions equals one minute now that script is referring to this script which handles which is the gump demo script currently it is not one minute if I set this to one minute then it will now be checked now and there's another on use uh, trigger inside the other script, the CTF script, so it's running both of those whenever I use something, right? Uh, that's kind of confusing, maybe, but don't worry about it. Um, the, if you you can have more than one XML script on somebody if it has a different name, and you can have both one of them have an on use function or trigger, then you will you know double up what happens basically um, when you use anything. All right, so. Uh, but that's not what I want. I don't want to. I don't care about whether this script is subscribed to one minute. I care about whether or not this script is subscribed to one minute. Therefore, I got to do the uh, same thing I did in the Uber script thing here. 
I gotta get the attachment and check the timer subscriptions on it, right? So let's do that. String, I still need the string. Get attachment, right? Um, default equals, I'm converting it to a string. Um, I'm gonna get the attachment named CTF main. Um, grab the timer subscription. If it's one minute, then it's enabled, right? Gonna save that. Gonna do an Uber reset. And now it's not enabled. Uh, so it's off. So now I want to turn it on because I had it unchecked and I closed it. I'm gonna turn it on. Now it's enabled. Turn it off. And then, so if you have it checked and you right click it to close it, it actually will go ahead and process it. There it is, it's on. And it's. Oh, that's interesting. Huh, I'll have to kind of look into that. So it's not on. I double click something, it's not on. I close it. Now it is on. Right, so it is on currently. Double click it, but this is not currently populating correctly, so I'm not sure why that would be. I'll have to look into that, but anyway. So, as long as that's checked, and you type in thir whatever day is you want and 30 or whatever time you want to do it. Um, and we want to do Saturday. Um, oh, it didn't. So now it's Saturday here, but I guess I have to do it separately. So now I'm going to set the time. 17.30, that's 5.30 EST. 17.30 on Saturday. So, and let's see if it's enabled. Yes, it's subscribed in one minute, so it's pretty much good to go. Uh, that's the end of the tutorial.